Welcome to the talk show, Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. The goal of this show is to provide a learning experience to people of all ages, with guests from various fields in academics, a wide range of industries, and insight into the many forms of art, athletics, and entertainment. We hope you enjoy the show. American rapper, singer, songwriter, and minister, Curtis Blow is our guest today. Curtis is the first commercially successful rapper to sign with a major record label. Curtis will talk about his music and experiences throughout his career. Hello and welcome to the talk show, Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. Joining me today is hip hop legend, Curtis Blow. Let's bring him on. Curtis Blow, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me here, Mark. Oh, it's such, such an honor. You know, you are a legend in the hip hop industry and you were the first rapper to sign with a major record label, I believe it was Mercury. And uh, we often know the glory, but not the story. So uh, mm -hmm. what were the struggles the years before you signed that contract? Well, it was an amazing time in my life. Um, I'm actually uh, two thirds of the way finished with my book, telling my life story uh, and autobiography. But as I reflect and go back to those early days, I mean, I was uh, a street dude from Harlem, USA, and uh, I was a break dancer, uh, a b-boy, prax practicing on the rooftops of Harlem, and it was our safe haven back in those days, and I remember just uh, wanting to become a DJ because uh, uh, there was a special music that we played to break dance to. And if you didn't know those songs, you are left out in the cold. So I became a DJ to play the songs that we could dance to. And that's how I got started, man. And uh, uh, eventually, uh, later on in 1974, I started uh, emceeing, they call it, uh, rapping, and just uh, mimicking the radio DJs that were on the radio. My, my hero, my mentor, Mr. Hank Spann was his name, and I was an impressionist, and I used to do his voice that became my voice, um, like... Uh, this is Hank Spann, WWRL, Super 16. They call me the server, you know? And I used to do that voice all around uh, in high school. And uh, eventually I got the opportunity to get on the mic in 1974. And uh, I used that voice in orientating the crowd on where they were uh, and how we were uh, going to have a great night uh, and motivating and inspiring the crowd to have a good time. So that became my start of becoming an MC. And eventually, I got the opportunity to work with people like Grandmaster Flash and, uh, of course, Russell Simmons and, and the son of Curtis Blow, uh, Reverend Run, uh, uh, um, and run DMC and uh, people like the Fat Boys. And I, I got signed in 1979 uh, to Mercury Polygram uh, as the first MC slash rapper to sign on a major label. And that, that's outstanding. And that's uh, being the, the vanguard of something like that is just huge. And it's interesting, you mentioned Run DMC. Uh, years ago, friends and I, tried, I'm talking 25, 35 years ago, friends and I uh, were trying to get an educational television show together and we interviewed Run DMC. So, you know, what an honor that was. I, I used to have more hair on my head. Can you see this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's me with Run, Run DMC when I was working with friends, putting that, uh, that together. So that's really cool. You also, so it wasn't just working with these people in a performance style, besides performing, you also produce the Fat Boys, Run DMC, so much more. How does your mind shift when you go from performer to producer? Oh, that's a great question. As a producer, you are the dream maker. You are trying to 
make people's dreams turn into reality. And I remember just the fat boys uh, in particular uh, 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 be in the studio and rest in peace uh, to Buff, my good friend. Uh, man, he just said to me one day, he said, oh man, Kurt, Kurt, oh, man, oh, all I want is a car. <laughs> <laughs> and they have uh, achieved much more than that. A couple of houses and property and uh, several cars. So, you know, you're job as a producer is to make the dream come true for the artist. And that was my job. I just wanted to help people uh, 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 be that instrument of change for them to help them launch their careers. And that is such a, a meaningful job, you know, it's just, just a uh, being there for people and and seeing on their faces the joy and the 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 just the the happiness of them succeeding in the studio and when we get to that finished master and when we mix and we have that final mix and to see the look on their faces when they realize oh man this is exactly what I wanted. And this is what I pictured it to be. And we achieved that. So I, I think that's that's amazing that your 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 mindset is that way because quite honestly, it almost sounds like that your level of expectation and responsi responsibility might even be higher than the artist. Which is which is which is old school. That is not the way in certain industries today. It's me, 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 me. And it sounds like you've projected what you wanted for yourself, and you respect that others want the same thing. So, so I think that's incredible. And you, you've been in the business so long and had so many successes. But I know, unfortunately, you have lost many friends and colleagues over the years. And, and I know, uh, Curtis, that you're a strong advocate for uh, musical artists and. Uh, health and medical bills and coverage and things of that. Where has that journey taken you? Well, it's been a journey. I tell you, my health, uh, I've had some issues uh, the last four or five years and uh, going into cardiac arrest. I mean, my God, you know, that's, that's deep right there. You know, I died for five minutes and they hit me with the defibrillator, you know, the bop gun, and I came back and I remember them being in the ambulance and man, my son was there. He was like, stay with us, pop, stay with us. And man, I got to the hospital and, and, and I had four surgeries since then, 2017, four heart surgeries. And it was amazing, life threatening and Man, when those things happen to you, it changes you. You know, you start to uh, realize that life is really, really precious, man. And you, you can be here one day and go on the next, you know. So I, 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 the last surgery was a full heart transplant. And I'm here to tell you, I am a walking, living, breathing testimony of uh, the fact that God is still in the miracle business. Amen. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, you, as a recipient of a heart transplant, uh, besides from medical information that you learned and questions you asked and going through the journey, what did you learn about yourself when you went through this process? Well, um, health wise, you know, as we reach uh, 45, 50 years old, our health should be our priority. So when I was first diagnosed as having heart disease, man, that's when I, I, I really started to try and change my life. It didn't do any good. Uh, I still went, you know, down the road of uh, almost dying, but um, I still changed a lot of my uh, behavior, uh, a lot of my uh, 
food intake, diet is so very, very important. I learned that your diet, you are what you eat. And man, I did everything trying to uh, 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 turn around this heart disease, right? And so, man, I, I, I stopped eating meat. I became a vegan, uh, a pescatarian. Also, uh, I stopped doing a, a lot of things I was doing before then, like no more drugs. But the main thing, you know, that really got me into this predicament was cigarettes. Mm. Cigarette smoking was the cause of my heart disease. The doctors were telling me and telling me, and I didn't realize till after I got to a point in my life where my heart was so weak, I couldn't even walk down the street or walk up the stairs, you know? And it was because of the cigarettes, man. This is why I, I had a, a, a aorta problem. I had a major, major surgery because my aorta had tore. Uh, uh, and that's like, you don't come back from that. So once I had that surgery and I realized that, yo, life is really, really precious. And I had a miracle surgery. Uh, yeah, and then I have to tell you, I know people in my own life who have these warnings that you have and they don't change their line, your lives. You know, you go out to dinner with them and they eat like they're going to the electric chair tomorrow. And I'm like, didn't you just have a surgery? Oh, they pop two pills, better living through science. And uh, it's just the wrong way. So, so I love your message. And uh, my father was a tremendously heavy smoker, uh, started to get emphysema. And his doctor said, hey, you can't fly in a plane to visit your grandchildren if you have emphysema. And he stopped immediately. So it's so encouraging that you recognize that smoking is what led to that. And all those other things added to it and that you made such a life change. But uh, do you see that there are other artists, hip hop artists, people you've been associated with, colleagues and friends who, have, who are having health issues and, uh, you know, medical care is so important. Medical coverage is so important. Haven't you advocated for some people and gotten involved in, in, in assisting them? Yes, yes, yes. We form an organization called the United Coalition for Humanity, where we're out there trying to help people in situations like this. Uh, we have uh, 10 committees from criminal justice reform to sustainability, to education, entertainment, women's rights, uh, health and wellness. Our health and wellness committee is so very important. We are talking to the professionals around the country. I'm talking about doctors and lawyers and, and businessmen who all agree that our health is our top priority. And I just want to say there's one other thing. Uh, water is a miracle entity in this whole thing everyone. Your water intake is so very, very important. It's a miracle cure. Yes. And so we want to bring this knowledge and this education uh, to all of our people out there who deserve to know, you know, this can save lives. And under the United Coalition for Humanity, our biggest leg right now is something, another organization we call the Hip Hop Alliance, where we have partnered up with SAG-AFTRA to promote fair wages and fair royalties and, and uh, uh, health and pension benefits for all of our hip hop and R&B ecosystem that is out there. So that is one of our priorities to get out there and help our people who are just uh, passing away every day, man. It's, you know, just uh, Kaysley, my buddy Kaysley, DJ Kaysley just passed away. You know, yeah, we that are- was yesterday, I think, right? Was yeah. And- we are so caught up in this new age of crisis that we are all dealing with. The pandemic is out there and, and 
all of the injustices that are happening around uh, the world. Uh, we are at war with the Ukraine men. Man, so many, life is just seems like it's turned upside down right now. So this is why we formed the Hip Hop Alliance so we can get out there and help our people, you know, not just survive, but to thrive and live their lives more abundantly. And health is our top priority. Well, I have to tell you, people in the entertainment industry often like to give back, but this sounds like giving back times 10, which I think is just phenomenal that, you, that you're so involved. You know, you mentioned water being so, such a great thing. I think a lot of people watching the show don't realize that uh, in different countries, they don't have the access to clean water as, as easily and readily as we do. So people could be sitting back, what is he talking about? So what water, I drink a lot of water. Yeah, because you have access to water. So in other countries, they don't have access to clean water like that. So, so it's great that you, you, you have that knowledge and you, and you pay it forward, so to speak. And the Hip Hop Alliance, what a, what a great uh, entity. But uh, I have a question for you about hip hop. I mean, you, you know, you are one of hip hop's leading greatest legends. And I'm just curious as to your feelings on the current state of hip hop music. Well, it, it, it's a controversy. You talk to a lot of my peers and they are frustrated and upset and uh, they don't like the new uh, rappers that are doing their thing. But as for me, uh, I look at it as, hey man, it's incredible the way it has matured, the way it has grown, uh, the raps are more complicated, faster, wittier. There is a lot of variety. Uh, we call it mad flavor <laughs> from the dirty South to the Midwest to uh, the West Coast to the traditional New York. But you know, the most incredible thing about hip hop today is if you travel outside of the country and you go to places like Germany, they rap in German now. French, they rap in French and Japanese over in Japan and the countries outside of America have embraced hip hop and made it their own culture. So you travel to Germany, yeah, there's a there's still a small American hip hop scene in Germany. But then there is even a bigger, a huge German hip hop scene and cats are rapping in their native tongues and they are the top pop artists in their country. This is such an amazing thing. We live in a hip hop generation Hip hop is the number one stream music around the world. It used to be country and Western, but now hip hop is number one. So everyone uh, on the planet is tuning in to hear what hip hop has to say. So we have still, we have the potential to changing the world. And you can do it again, young people, the world is yours. All right, let's go. What a great answer, because you even said it in your response that, you know, it's great music, but hip hop is a culture. And uh, I would argue that I don't know that people realize that it's in other tongues, it's in other countries. That's just, uh, that's worldwide. To go global with an initiative like that is really incredible. And, uh, you know, you are the comeback kid and you were brought back after five minutes and you have a total different view on, on life. But we know at the end of the day, uh, Curtis, that none of us can live forever, but we can create things that do. So what do you want your legacy to be? Well, you know, uh, for me, I, I, I just want to uh, help people. You know, I have been blessed and fortunate with a miracle heart transplant. I have a, 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 a heart transplant that gave me a change of heart. And I just want to preach love for the rest of my days. Every day I wake up is a great day because any day above ground is a good day. Yeah. And I just want to preach love for the rest of my life. 
this is my covenant. This is my agreement to my father up in heaven that I will represent and let everyone know that God is still in the miracle business. And what God did for me, God can do for you too. God is able. That is a tremendous legacy. And of course, you know, your legacy is going to go way beyond that. But uh, that, that's, a, that's a great legacy for you. So uh, you're not done yet. You're just coming back from surgery. You're still performing. So what's, what's next for Curtis Blow? Well, I'm um, looking forward to the Hip Hop Nutcracker again this year. You know, we've been doing this uh, uh, national tour for the last eight years now. And um, I'm looking to return to burn back on the stages uh, around the country and make it happen. And, and there might be a tour happening with myself, the Sugar Hill Gang, and uh, Grandmaster Melly Mel and Scorpio from the Furious Five. And we're thinking about doing a, a, a tour called the, the Big Three or the the OG three. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to that next year, going out to Europe and uh, uh, all around the world. That's that's phenomenal. Uh, Curtis Blow, I can't thank you enough for joining us today, sharing your, your journey as an artist. Uh, more importantly, I would say as a human being and uh, what you continue to do, what you've done. Uh, it's such an honor to have you here today. Uh, to the viewers, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Curtis Blow, you're the man. Thank you so much for everything. Thank All right. And, and I thank you and everyone. Join us at hiphopalliance.org. Thanks so much, Curtis. Take care. Peace. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman. To contact Mark, email him at info at lifestorieswithmarkhoberman.com or visit him on social media through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Thank you for watching Life Stories with Mark Hoberman.